souls. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Carolyn and this channel is all about true crime, mystery, and anything abnormal. I highly recommend subscribing because this channel is definitely a vibe. So just before I get into the video, I just want to say to you, if you can like, comment, subscribe, all the uh, YouTube things, I'm really trying to grow the channel and I would love for you to engage with the video in any way. Maybe share it with someone you know that's into true crime. But with that being said, let's get into today's story. Today's story takes place in Kempsey, England. A man by the name of Andrew operated a 500 acre farm. When he had purchased the farm, it was quite run down, but he knew with a lot of hard work, he could get this farm up and operating. And he just loved being out in nature. He found having this enormous farm all this land to work. It was very peaceful and enjoying, and it was just really a really great place for him. But that peace he felt being on that farm was about to be disrupted forever. In 2018, Andrew called a maintenance company. He had an old septic tank that was on the property of the farm that was, wasn't being used. It was very old and he wanted to have maintenance workers come out to clean out the tank and service it. A man by the name of Alistair Pitt was the maintenance worker that came out to drain his septic tank. Now he started, uh, draining the septic tank, or I'm not exactly sure how you service a septic tank. But one thing that Alistair found was he found a lot of little bones. When he found all of these little bones, he assumed they were from animals, which would be a normal response. So he kind of gathered up the bones and just kind of threw them behind some bushes on the property. It was not uncommon in his work in servicing septic tanks to find small bones from animals. And so he wasn't alarmed. He did what he had to do and he left. Andrew, the farm owner, was still having some issues with the septic tank. So he called the company again and on July 9th, 2018, they came out to service the septic tank again. This time they found more little bones and they found some hair. Again, I guess when you service septic tanks, I guess it's not unusual somehow for little animals to get in and you find their hair and little bones and stuff. So again, when the maintenance worker was working on it, he's just thinking these are just bones from an animal, picked them up, threw them behind the bushes, the same time thing he had done the previous time. And he thought that, you know, that was kind of going to be the end of the story. The next time he came out was going to be very different. It was a year later in July 2019 and Alistair was called back by Andrew to service the septic tank again. This time it was decided that they were going to completely empty the septic tank. So they start servicing the septic tank and this time they found much larger bones. And Andrew and Alistair are kind of talking about it and this time they're like, those are pretty big bones for an animal. And they were thinking maybe it was a really large dog, but the two of them were very uh, unsettled. And it wasn't like the last time where it was like, oh yeah, it's definitely just animals throw them behind the bushes. This time they were kind of like, maybe we need to see what else is in there. So they kept going in searching the septic tank. This time they found a lot of hair and this was not something as common because the amount of hair seemed like a lot to come from a small animal. Alistair then at the very bottom of the tank found a human skull. So at this point, obviously they know that none of these are animal bones. So Andrew, the man who owns the farm calls the police and reports to them the discovery that the septic tank company had just discovered on his property. When the police came out to the property, they obviously emptied every single thing that was in this septic tank. One thing they found was they found clothing that was from Marks and Spencer's, which is a clothing store, 
but the clothing labels were from the 1970s and the 1960s. So this tells the police that the clothing that this body was wearing were purchased either in the 60s or the 70s. And by the state of the bones, they could tell that this person had been in this tank for an extremely long time. So the first question to Andrew is, how long have you owned this farm? And Andrew told them he had bought the farm about five years ago. So immediately police knew that Andrew was not involved in this because he had not owned the farm. This is a crime that had obviously been committed many, many years before. To Andrew though, he felt extremely sick to his stomach because when the police told him about the clothing that was from the 1960s and the 1970s, he knew immediately who it was. Because the thing is, is that Andrew did not buy this farm from a stranger. He had bought it from his uncle, David Vestables. And Andrew knew that David's wife, Brenda, had gone missing a very long time ago. So police decide to go to David to talk to him about the body they have just discovered in this septic tank. July 15th, 2019, when they had gone to speak to David, David told them the tank had been emptied many times. It couldn't have anything to do with him. And he also stated that the tank had been searched 40 years ago when his wife went missing. And the police were like, I'm sorry, what? What? Your wife went missing? Sorry? Huh? Because when Andrew, the nephew, had been told that there was this body in the septic tank, he instantly thought that it had been his uncle's, had killed his aunt and put her in there. But he didn't mention this to police because it really shocked him that her body had been in here all these years and he had now been living on this farm for five years and had been this peaceful place that he just really felt comfortable. And it's he's finding out his aunt's body had been at the bottom of that septic tank the entire time he had lived there. And Brenda, who is David's wife, she had gone missing on May 4th, 1982. David was then arrested 15 days later on July 30th, 2019. After he was arrested, he was let out on bail because obviously the police need to do DNA testing to prove that this is the body of Brenda. So he was arrested, let out on bail, and police are doing their investigation behind the scenes. And despite the police obviously believing that this was Brenda's body and that it was David who was responsible, they still needed to do a full investigation to be able to convict David of this. And so they began talking to a lot of people and finding out a lot of information and it wasn't going to look good for David. As the police started to talk to people who knew David, who had known Brenda, one thing that came up was that David had had a lot of affairs on Brenda. His most notable affair was with a woman named Lorraine Stiles. They had begun an affair when she had started being the caretaker for David's mother and David's grandmother. The affair began in 1966 and continued on on and off affair for 14 years. 14 years. Wow. And I don't know why when I hear affairs that go on for like 14 years, it's like shit or get off the pot, like pick who you want to be with. And who like 14 years I can't imagine having to like keep that as a secret. I can't imagine being a woman who's okay with a married man for 14 years and 
him being such a scumbag that he's like treating his wife this way. Like I just, 14 years, just, it blows my mind. I know it happens and stuff like that. But when I think about affairs going that long, I'm just like, just leave your wife or leave your mistress. Like make a choice, like pick who you want to be with. Why is this? Anyways, anyways, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm a little spicy today. Mwah. By 2019, when the discovery of the body was made, Lorraine had already passed away. But Lorraine had been interviewed by police when Brenda had gone missing. She had given police all the details of everything that had gone on with their affair. And she also mentioned that in 1981, David had talked to her and said that he wanted to leave his wife, Brenda, and be with Lorraine full time. After Brenda had gone missing, David had gone to Lorraine's house and she had told police back when she had done this interview that she found it extremely eerie the way that David talked about Brenda's disappearance. He talked about it as though it was just like, you know, telling her randomly I went and picked up bread at the store or something like he was very casual in telling her as though it was not a big deal that his wife had gone missing and he just he he was completely unbothered in any way by it and I mean obviously if he's had an affair with his wife for 14 years he doesn't love her but still Lorraine found it very very disturbing she also found it strange a couple weeks later when he came by her house to have sex, which I don't quite understand because you've been having an affair with him for 14 years. That part doesn't seem strange to me, but she found it weird, I guess. David and Lorraine's relationship ended in 1982 when Lorraine had spotted him around town, I guess, going on dates with other women. And then at that point, she's like, no, that's too much. You being married for 14 years, cool with that. But um, yeah, if you're going to start having other women, I'm out, I guess. I don't know. It's like, you know what? Like, please, if they're going to do it with you, they're going to do it to you. But apparently him having a wife was okay. But him having other women he slept with wasn't I don't know how this woman I don't know how she was justifying all this shit in her head but somehow anyways 1982 the two of them call it quits Lorraine's had enough police also started looking through other interviews that had been done when Brenda had gone missing um they talked to obviously family friends people that knew David people that knew Brenda people he worked with and one theme that really came through to the police was almost every single person mentioned how unbothered David was about Brenda being missing. Like he did not seem concerned. He didn't seem upset at all. He seemed very casually as though like they had agreed, let's break up and she moved on and she's fine somewhere. Like he was very, very casual about it. And everybody seemed to notice that and found it very, very bizarre. They had also taken a look at Brenda's doctor's records because David's excuse will later come up. And it has to do with him claiming that Brenda was suffering from very bad depression. And this could be why she went missing. So they took a look at her doctor's reports and nothing seemed too alarming in the doctor's reports regarding, um, you know, uh, this depression that he was kind of trying to push at the time she went missing, that this is what had led to her disappearance. They concluded their investigation by December, but it took another six months before they made the announcement that David was the person they believed was responsible for Brenda's disappearance and murder. In June 2021, David Venables was arrested and charged with Brenda's murder at the age of 88 years old. 
The trial took place in July 2022, and David basically denied everything. He denied having anything to do with Brenda's disappearance. He denied all of the affairs he had had. He did admit to the affair that he had with Lorraine because there was proof that he had had an affair with Lorraine. The other affairs that he had, he just lied and said that they were just rumors. They weren't true. And even though he had admitted to the affair with Lorraine, he dismissed everything that she had said in regards to her concern about his behavior around the time after Brenda had gone missing. And he just said to police, like, she's erratic, she's crazy. And it's like, no, you're erratic, David. You're crazy. Not her. You're crazy. You're the one that murdered your wife. David denied that he would ever leave Brenda for Lorraine. And what some other people had mentioned when they had been interviewed when Brenda disappeared was that the couple were sleeping in separate beds and they really, the marriage was not going well. David countered that and he said, no, we slept in the same bed until the day she disappeared and our marriage was mostly fine. I mean, I was sleeping with a woman for 14 years but yeah our marriage it was fine no worries nothing to look at here so the defense they've got to have something right they've got to use something to try to defend this pos so what they said was that brenda had this depression and that she must have left the house gone outside somehow moved the 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 lid to the septic tank now the uh, i googled how much older septic tanks what the average weight for the the lid would be i don't know i couldn't find out exactly this specific septic tank how heavy it would be everything I was reading they would just say it would be too heavy for her too heavy too heavy when i looked it up it said it sounds like for older septic tanks the lid of it weighs between 60 and 80 pounds again i'm not 100 percent sure that that's accurate to this that was just the closest weight that i could find so the defense is trying to say brenda comes out of the house goes to the old septic tank She's able to move the lid off, which, yeah, that could be possible. 60 to 80 pounds would probably be a lot for her to move. But if we're going to go with plausibility, that could possibly happen. The story really falls apart because they claim she then jumps in the tank. And from inside the tank, she moves the 60 to 80 pound lid of the septic tank back over exactly where it was and that's impossible <laughs> like that didn't happen I mean I know you got to come up with a defense but no uh yeah I, the math ain't mathing on that one sweetie but I you got to have a defense so that's what you're going with go for it obviously the prosecution rejected this based on common sense like just use logic that's did not happen, but okay, defense. The prosecution's case was that he had killed Brenda because he wanted to be with Lorraine, I guess, full time. So during the trial, the prosecution obviously goes over with uh, all the information from all the family, for all the interviews that had been done when Brenda went missing and how everyone stated he was completely unbothered he was not worried he wasn't upset it was just like another day to him like Brenda's disappearance did not affect him at all also one of his employees Trevor Brooks who had worked for David said that at the time when Brenda had gone missing he he like Trevor himself and everyone who had worked for David went to David and said do you want us to help us search for Brenda? Like, we're here, we're ready. Do you, like, is there anything that we can do to help you? Is there anywhere you want us to search? And David basically said, no, like, I don't want you to look for her. And the people that worked for him were like, okay, something weird is going on because he had no interest in 
really anything to do with Brenda's disappearance. So after a five-week trial, David was found guilty and he was found guilty by majority. And this place, uh, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, this place or this case takes place in England. So they don't need to have 100% yes. They just need to have majority of the jury believe that he is guilty. If that, if you're from England and that's like, I'm not explaining that correctly, please leave it in the comments because I did look into it and that's my understanding of it, but I'm sure somebody who lives in England would have a much uh, better way of explaining exactly how that works and if that's correct. But he was found guilty. That's the important part. And when David heard the verdict, he had absolutely no reaction. He looked at the jury and was just stone-faced. And the high court judge, Mrs. Tibbles, um, told David this. I'm going to read the statement so I get it word for word exactly what she said. So this is what the judge said to David. I'm sure you killed Brenda to remove her from your life and the complications she may have presented to you in any divorce proceedings. There is no doubt on the element of greed and selfishness. You killed Brenda in her own home where she was recuperating with an injured leg and suffering from depression. You were Brenda's husband and you should have been, or sorry, no, she should have been able to trust you. Your complete lack of respect for Brenda is obvious from your decision to dispose of her body in a septic tank. The fact that that is what you did with her body is disgusting and repulsive. Give it to him, judge. Yeah, he is repulsive and disgusting. At the age of 89, David Vestibles was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 18 years. And a heartbreaking statement was made by Brenda's family after the verdict was read. And this is what the statement said. We, Brenda's nieces and nephews, are relieved that today, after a wait of 40 years, at least there is justice for Brenda. David Vestibles can no longer get away with having murdered his wife, the hiding of her body, and all his deceit, lies, and fabrications. We feel utter horror and despair that Brenda was murdered. She was no harm to anyone, being a gentle and increasingly quiet woman. We'll never know how she died or how much she suffered. We pray her death was quick. The torment of her body being found in the septic tank of her house will never leave us. It haunts our nights. We cannot come to terms with her being put in such a repulsive and shocking place. And then by continuing to use the septic tank, her murderer dishonored her dead body every day for 30 years after murdering her. David robbed Brenda of the second half of her life and robbed her of any dignity in death. By concealing Brenda's remains, he made her family live through the hell of not knowing what had happened to her and robbed the family of the opportunity to bury Brenda for over 37 years. In that time, many close family members have died. Her parents would have been spared the unending wait for her return and been comforted by her continued care of them. We can imagine how much the lives of her two sisters would have been enhanced by Brenda's presence and her quiet enjoyment of their company. Both sisters were successful women in their careers. Perhaps Brenda would have been like them. She liked to travel and perhaps would have joined her two sisters on their many years of holidays together in retirement. Brenda would have been the family beauty at the wedding, 
of her five surviving nieces and nephews, we would have been so proud of her. She would have taken great delight in her 10 great nieces and nephews, perhaps seeing herself reflected in the culinary skills of one, the polished beauty of another, and the active empathy of a third. We continue to miss Brenda and we will never forget her. Her characteristics live on in our family. After 40 long years, we pray that you can at least rest in peace, Brenda. And it's just so horrible to, you know, have her missing for all of those years. And the family, it's just when someone goes missing, and it's not just in this case, in other true crime cases where the body isn't discovered for years and years, like the family is in this constant state of like pain and anguish. And, you know, if you have a family member who is murdered, it's not like I think you really ever get true peace with that. But at least if you have their body treated respectfully, they can be buried or if you prefer spreading their ashes, whatever, you know, the family decides. At least in that, it's a way that they can like honor her. And it's just so disgusting that he literally left her body in a septic tank and continued to use it. Like, it's just disgusting. He's disgusting. And he was cool as a cucumber when the jury convicted him and he was given his sentence. But when he was led to his cell, he was heard screaming, no, 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 over and over and over. So... That wasn't for you, that was for him. Because of his age and his sentence, he's definitely going to die in prison. But unlike Brenda, he'll be given a dignified burial, which he certainly does not deserve. So that's the end of today's story. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please, um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'm really trying to grow the channel. So any engagement with the video is absolutely so much appreciated. You guys are absolutely amazing and I appreciate each and every one of you, especially if you're still here listening to me and I will see you in the next one.